Hi, welcome to my video on proofs with squares. Proofs with squares, before, before we start, I want to just go over the idea of when we got a parallelogram, or we have a rectangle, or we have a rhombus, or we have a square. And you notice that in this parallelogram here, that the we have the opposite sides parallel. So that would be true for a rectangle, opposite sides are parallel. That would be also true for a rhombus with opposite sides parallel. And it would be also true for a square with opposite sides parallel. Because a square is a rhombus and a rectangle and a parallelogram. A rhombus is not a rectangle, but is a parallelogram. And a rectangle is a parallelogram. Also, the diagonals bisect each other, so like this. And that's true for each one of these figures. The diagonals bisect each other in all four of these diagrams. So, Parallelogram diagonals bisect, a rectangle the bi diagonals bisect, and in a rhombus the diagonals bisect, and the square the diagonals bisect. Notice that we have a rectangle, we have right angles, and notice in a square we have right angles in the four corners. When we have right angles, the diagonals are congruent to each other. But when there, when there's a rhombus or a parallelogram, the diagonals are not congruent. And also, in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the angles. Like these angles are uh, congruent. Or this angle equals this one. And that's true also in the square. The diagonals bisect the angles. Just marking the angles with different symbols. So notice, if there's right angles, the diagonals are congruent. If there's not right angles, but the sides are all equal, as in a rhombus, all these sides are equal, and the square, all these sides are equal. That's just a little review of what we've done. So let's turn over and look at a square. The definition of a square is a quadrilateral with four right angles and four sides equal. So there's four right angles and four sides equal. A square is a rectangle and a rhombus because a, a rectangle has four right angles, which a square has, and a rhombus has four sides equal. So a square has four sides equal. So a square is a rectangle and a rhombus. A square is what we call a regular quadrilateral. That means regular means all angles are equal and all sides are equal. So a square is everything below it. A square is a rectangle, a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus. So that means, if you think about it, a square has all of these properties that I'm going to name here. But let's look at one at a time. Two pairs of opposite sides parallel, that's true for a parallelogram, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. Two pairs of opposite sides equal, that's true for each one of these. One pair of opposite sides equal and parallel, that's true for all of these. The diagonals bisect each other, that's true for all four of these. Consecutive angles are supplementary. That's true for all four of them. Uh, diagonals are congruent. Nope. A yes. Rhombus. No. Square. Yes. So only when you have diagonals are going to equal only when you have right angles. The diagonals are perpendicular. Not in a parallelogram. Not in a rectangle but it's true for a rhombus and a square because the diagonals are perpendicular when all sides are equal. And the diagonals bisect the opposite angles, and that's 
not true in a parallelogram, not true in a rectangle, but it's true in a rhombus and a square. So just reviewing those properties. And again, if you get confused, just draw the, a sketch of the diagram and you'll see how they work. Let's look at this proof now. We have a proof here. We're given this figure. We're given that M-A-T-H is a square. Uh, M-T and A-H. M-T and A-H by intersect at O. Right here. So, let's name. Uh, we want to prove that, <coughs> excuse me, triangle M-O-A is a is right isosceles triangle. So we need to prove we got a right angle, which is perpendicular lines, and sides isosceles, two sides equal. So let's name this angle one right here. This is angle one. So we have that we have M A T H is a square, and that's given. And the right the diagonals intersect at O. So that means we have AH is perpendicular to MT. And the reason is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other in the square. So the diagonals of a square are perpendicular. That means that angle 1 is a right angle because definition of perpendicular lines because perpendicular lines form right angles. That means that triangle M O A M better make that an M M O A Triangle M O A is a right triangle. Definition of a right triangle, because a right triangle has a right angle. So if angle one is a right angle, then M O A is a right triangle. So we proved it's a right triangle, now we're going to prove it's isosceles. So we have, and let's go with one, two, three, four. One is a given. That's number two. Diagonals of a square are perpendicular. That's number three. Uh, definition of perpendicular lines. And number four, definition of a right angle. Number five, MT and HA bisect each other because the diagonals of a square bisect each other. And because they bisect each other, that means that MO is equal to TO and AO equals HO. That's the definition of a segment bisector. Number seven. It's number seven. Now we have MT is equal to MO plus OT. And HA is equal to HO plus OA, and that's uh, segment addition ADD property. In other words, MT is made up of MO and OT, HA is made up of HO and AO. So, number eight, we have that MT is equal to MO 
plus MO and HA is equal to OA plus OA and that's substitution SUB STIT substitution because we have we said right here that MO so I put TO replace OT with MO and I replace HO with AO by substitution and that means that MT is equal to 2 MO and HA is equal to 2 OA and that's the addition property of equality so notice that you add the two of them together you get MO and MO is 2 MO OA and OA is 2 AO and number 10 we have that from uh, right uh, where we said the diagonals okay MT is equal to HA the diagonals the diagonals of a square are equal two diagonals of a square are equal. So that means that we have 2MO equals 2OA by, you could say, transitive property because MT is equal to 2MO, HA is equal to 2OA. So there's MT there, there's HA right here, they're equal. So these 2MO is equal to 2AO by transitive property. And as a result, that MO equals OA by division. Division property of equality. And hence, we have the triangle M O A is a right, make that an A, is a right isosceles. And the reason for that is the definition of a right isosceles. And when I do that, the two sides are equal. We have them uh, M O equals A O. That's in number 12, and we have the right angle in number one, number four, we got a, number three, we got a right angle, which makes it a right triangle, so that's 12 and four. The two sides are equal, and we have a right triangle. So that proof is done. Just, you take your time with the proofs, you organize them, and we have some more to do. So, we have a diagram here, and... We're given that A, B, V, F is a square and that B, A bisects angle C, A, V. And as a result, we have of all that in this diagram, we're going to prove that angle C, which is right here, equals angle 1. So, let's put some numbers in, 2 and 3. I'm going to put these numbers in rather than use three letters. I'm putting numbers in so I don't have to go B, A, V. So when I say two, we're looking at this angle. So to do the proof, we're given that A, B, V, F is a square. That's a given. And if it's a square, Let's see that we have, that means that the sides of a square or the diagonals, let's see, I want to prove, well, let's look at the proof first before I, even though I said that, uh, we have a square, so we got to get from angle 1 to angle C, we got to get C equals to 1. So that means, how am I going to relate 
you get these two, so can I get a pair of congruent triangles? Like A, B, C, congruent to A, B, V. I got angle 1 equals angle C, so there must be some angle that's equal to 1 and is equal to C. So it looks like we have 6. So if I can get C equal to 6 and 1 equal to 6, then I can say 1 equals C by transitive or substitution. But I got to get a pair of triangles congruent. So let's go with B, B A bisects angle C, A, V. And I could have put both of those in the same given. So that means that angle 2 equals angle 3 by definition of an angle bisector. And let's see what else we have. We have that AB is equal to AB, and that's a common side. So AB is in triangle ABC, and AB is in triangle ABV. So now we have, we got the square. So the square, we have AB is, or we could say that, uh, let's say that, let's go with a 5 right here, and say that angle 4 is a right angle. Angle 4 is a right angle. And that's the definition of a square. And as a result, let's put 6 right here. That means that AB is perpendicular to, because that's a right angle. That means that AB is perpendicular to CV. Definition of perpendicular lines. And hence, we have that angle 4 is equal to angle 5 because perpendicular segments or lines form congruent adjacent angles. So that means we have Let's see, we have 2 equals 3 right here. We have this side is common. We have 4 is equal to 5. So we have triangle A, B, C congruent to triangle A, B, V. And that's an A, S, A. Angle side, angle congruent side. And number nine, now that we have the triangles congruent, that means angle C equals angle six, C, P, C, T, C. Number 10, we have, now I have C is equal to six, now I need to get one equal to six. So angle one is equal to six because the diagonal of a square bisects its bisects its angles. In other words, it would bisect angle B A F, making this angle two equal to F A V, or bisect angle B V F. That means 1 equals 6. And as a result, C equals 6. 1 equals 6. Angle C is equal to angle 1 by transitive property. So, proofs. Takes the time to look them over and work them through. And let's have a look at another proof that we want to do here. Number 2. Again, we have this diagram, and we have E, A, B, C is a square. E, 
a, b, c is a square. So we look at all the properties of a square. Think about them. All the sides equal all the angles and the right angles. We'll see how that's going to work out in the proof. We have angle 1 equals angle 2 given. And we also have angle C E F C E F this big angle right here equals angle C B F C B F is this big angle here. So we have this big angle equals this one. So how am I going to get that F E equals F B? Well F E and F B are in the triangles F A E and F A B. So if I prove the two triangles congruent, I can get the sides by C P C T C. So how are we going to do it? We already have one equals two. That's a given. So we have a pair of angles equal already in the triangle. We have FA equal to FA. That's a common side. So we have this side equal to itself, common side. So I need an angle. So why did we make uh, CEF and CBF equal? Well, I, that means I'm probably going to need, a, if I if I say that AE equals AB, which is true, because all these sides of the square are equal, then this is going to be a, an ASS. So, yes, I can say it, but I can't use it, because it will give me an ASS tri triangle, and we can't use an ASS. So I need, and I can't use this side, that's what i got to prove, is FE is congruent to FB. So I need this angle, or I need this, I need these two angles right here equal, or this angle equal to this one. So let's number those angles. Let's go with um, 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So let's see, we have angle 3. And angle 5 are right angles. Definition of a square. But I didn't. Say, oh, so what I'm going to do is put, since I didn't put it in before, I'll say let's put it in now. So now I got the two givens. The, these in here. I didn't say the definition of a square, so I did, if I want to say definition of a square, I have to say that it's a square beforehand. So let's put it in here, in this given. Now I can say, because I have it in the given at step one, now I can say angle three and angle five are right angles. That means that angle three is equal to angle five. Because all right angles are equal. Now, let's go with angle C, E, F equals angle C, B, F given. Right? And angle C, E F is equal to angle C E F is equal to angle three plus angle four and angle C B F is equal to angle five plus angle six and that's the angle addition property and as a result we have angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to angle 5 plus angle, oh, make that an angle 6. And that's the trans, so 
C E F C B F. There they are right there. So they're equal because of five. Therefore, three plus four equals five plus six. That's the transitive property. Number eight. We have three equals five. There's three and five. So that means that angle four equals angle six. And that's subtraction property of equality. Because three is equal to five in number four. And we subtract them over here. So that's in dealing with four and seven. We subtract three and five, we get four equals six. Now we have four equals six, which is right here. So now we have enough to have the triangles congruent. So triangle F A E is congruent to F A B. And that's angle. Sorry, start here. If I go this way, angle side, I need this angle. But I have these two angles on this side, so it's angle, side, angle. Angle, side, sorry. Angle, angle, side. So angle, angle, side. So it's an A, A, S congruency. And as a result, F, E. Is equal to FB. C, B, C, T, C. And that proof is done. Just got to be careful in doing your proofs. Any statement that you make has to be valid. Okay, we got some more proof to do here using the properties of a square. We have a figure here, and we said that F, T, X, Y, F, T, X, Y, and T, V, W, X, T, V, W, X are squares. So there's a square right here, and there's a square right here. So we want to prove that T, X, bisects F, X, V. So T, X, bisects F, X, V. So we have to get this angle right here. So let's name the angles as um, 1 and 2 right here. So I need to get if Tx bisects Fxv I need to get 1 and 2 equal. So how do we do it? And we want to get the here we go let's see so we got squares, opposite sides of a square, the diagonals bisect the square. And let's see, angle one and angle, let's see, how do we get here? Let's go with three and four. Okay, so let's put down the F, T, X, Y, and T, V, W, X, our squares. We have the givens in the first step. So if F T X V is a square, that means that angle three is a right angle. And if T V W X is a square, that means that angle four is a right angle, but they're in two different squares. So they're right angles by definition of a square because the square has right angles. So that means that angle 3 is equal to angle 4 because all right angles are equal. So we got 3 is equal to 4. Now we have um, F T is equal to F T is equal to 
TX and TV is equal to TX because F T X Y is a square, so these two are equal. And this is a square. T V W X is a square. So these two are equal. So that's different squares. So that's the definition of a square. But they're two different squares. So these two are belonging to this square. These two are belonging to this square. And as a result, that Tx is here twice, so that means Ft is equal to Tv by transitive property. Because notice, both of them are equal to Tx, so Tx is here and Tx is here, so Ft is equal to Tv, transitive. And we have Tx is equal to Tx, common side. common side in both triangles. So now we have uh, this side equals this. This is common. 3 is equal to 4. So the two triangles are congruent. So triangle XTF and XTV. XTF is congruent to XTV by angle. Sorry side, angle, side. Congruency. And as a result, angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Oh, that's an 8. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2, C, P, C, T, C. And that means that Tx, T, X bisects angle F X V definition of angle bisector. So again I make up some different proofs, but to get these two angles equal, then I have to um, go with the congruent triangle. There are other ways that I could you could do this. And you could also, if you think about it, I could have gone with this way, that this is a right angle right here. TXW is a right angle. TXY is a right angle. And, but you had to do much more work to get, because these, these angles, TXY and TXW are equal. But we have, these are bisectors here. But there's much more work to go that way. This is the better way to go. Put these congruent triangles. Get the two triangles congruent here. And get the CPCTC with 1 equals 2. Number 4. A rectangle with a pair of adjacent sides equal is a square. So if I have a rectangle. So I'm given M A T H is a rectangle. With a pair of adjacent sides equal, so let's say that M A is equal to A T. So we got to prove that that M A T H is a square. So a rectangle with two adjacent sides equal is a square. Let's see how we're going to go here. We got M, that's number one, M-A-T-H is a rectangle. So if you, before I, let's continue here and we're done given. So we have a rectangle, but you know in a rectangle the opposite sides are equal. So MA is equal to HT, and MH is equal to AT. So I got these opposite sides equal, I have these opposite sides equal, but because this is given that these two are equal, that means they all end up to be equal. And therefore we have a square, a rectangle with, a re and we have 
a rectangle, we have four right angles right here. So we have four right angles, which is a rectangle. So all I need now is to get the four sides equal, which we can do by getting the opposite sides. So here we go. So angle M, uh, angle M, angle A, angle T, and angle H are right angles. And that's because the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle has four right angles, so we now have part of a square, because the square has four right angles. So we can go with uh, M A equals TH. We can go with MH equals AT, because the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. And we're given that MA equals AT are given. So if MA equals TH and uh, MH equals AT and MA equals AT, they're all going together. So that means that MA equals AT equals TH equals MH by transitive property. More than one transitive property. So now we have four right angles in number two. We have four sides equal to number five. So M A T H is a square. Why? By the definition of a square. And number two got all the angles equal. And number five got all the sides equal. Okay, one more to do. Prove that a rhombus with a right angle is a square. So a rhombus has all sides equal. So we have the all sides equal and we have a right angle. So what we need to do is prove we have four right angles on to get the square. So let's name M A T H is a rhombus. And with a right angle, so let's say that angle M is a right angle, so that's the given. So we got to prove that M A T H is a square. So what's a square? Four sides equal. So let's say that M A T H is a rhombus. That's given. And automatically in a rhombus that MA equals AT equals TH equals HM. And that's the definition of a rhombus, which is all sides are equal. Now we need to prove we have four right angles. So we have, uh, let's see, we got angle M is a right angle, and that's given. So that angle M is equal to angle T, number four, because opposite angles of a rhombus are equal, because a rhombus is a parallelogram, so the opposite angles of a rhombus are equal, and angle M is equal to 90 degrees. Definition of 
perpendicular lines, or sorry, definition, oh, that's wrong, definition of a right angle. Sorry about that. I was thinking about 90 degrees as being perpendicular, but we got a right angle, so we got 90. Make that angle, that's the angle M there. Now that means that angle T is equal to 90 by transitive property. That's the transitive property in uh, 4 and 5. Because if M equals T and M is 90, that means 10 is 90. That means that angle T is a right angle. Definition of a right angle. Now notice these little nitty gritty steps, but this is the official way to do it. Because when you use transitive property, you can only use transitive property in equality. You can't say because one is a right angle, the other one is a right angle, using transitive. Transitive is only used when you have equal sign or equality or congruency. Now we need, we have angle M as a right angle. We have angle T as a right angle. We have to get A and H right angles. So, how do we do it? Well, think about that angle M is supplementary to angle A and angle M is supplementary to angle H because the consecutive angles of a rhombus or a square or a uh, not a square, we can't say, we can say it's true for a square, but we haven't got a square yet. Parallelogram. So the consecutive angles of a rhombus are supplementary. And as a result, we got angle M plus angle A is equal to 180. And also that angle M plus angle H is 180. And that's definition of supplementary angles. So that means that number 10, we got we can angle M and T are equal to 90. So I can put a 90 here as M is 90. And M is 90, so I put 90 in here. So notice M plus A is 180. So angle M is 90 degrees right here in number 5. Angle M is 90 degrees, so that's substitution we're substituting them and the, we're substituting 90 in the place of m in both of these statements here and as a result that's uh, 8 there's 9 10 this is 11 so we have that angle a is equal to 90 Angle H is equal to 90. We're best by subtraction. So we're taking 90 out of this side and 90 out of this side. So angle A, we're taking 90 out of each of these here. So we get angle H is equal to 90. So we have that angle A and angle H are right angles. Definition of a right angle. So we have four right angles, which is in right here, three and seven. We got four sides equal. 
So that means that M A T H is a square. And we got four sides equal in number. That's the definition of a square. Now let's look at the so four sides equal in number two. And we got four, four and seven got right angles. And 12 have the other ones right angles. So there's the four sides equal in number two. And there's right angles in number four, right angles in seven, and right angles in 12. And that gives us a square by definition of a square. What's a square? Four right angles and four sides equal. So that brings us to the end of the, some proofs dealing with a square, the properties of a square. And these are made up to make you think. And the more thinking you can do, the more writing of proofs you can do, the better you get. And don't forget, any statement made in a proof below, any statement that's made has to be backed up by a reason. And if you like my video, click the like button, subscribe button, visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com to find more information about me, my videos, and the content is on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Bye-bye.